The Papal States is perhaps one of the more interesting and well-documented nations within EE4. Even today, the Vatican has its very own secret archives, documenting 35,000 volumes of catalogue and 12 centuries of documents. Particularly around the start date of EE4, the Papal States, intentionally or unintentionally, had perhaps one of the most significant impacts on the outcome of Europe for the next few centuries. Although we live in a different time, where religion is much less entangled within our lives, during the era of the 15th century, the Papal States was perhaps the most influential nation within the whole of Europe, bending all kings to their will. This is why in today's video, I want to help you understand just how interesting this nation is. Firstly, by talking about its origins, then its role around the start date of EE4, and how accurate it is represented in game. And finally, how it made a massive blunder, and in some ways diminished its power due to incompetence. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's first begin by chatting about the origins of the Papal States. The Catholic bishops of Rome first gained lands around the city in the 4th century, while the Western Roman Empire was still around. Over the centuries, with the collapse of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, and the significant reduction of power in the Byzantine Empire, who eventually pulled out of Italy with dwindling influence, the power of the Roman bishops increased significantly as the Italian population turned to them for aid and protection. A significant influence on the Papal State's history was Pope Gregory the Great, considered a saint within the Catholic Church. Gregory helped refugees from the invading Lombards, and even managed to establish a peace for a short period of time, as well as he saw his main mission was to Christianise the Anglo-Saxons. Gregory consolidated the Papal holdings into a unified territory. Although technically it was under Byzantine control, the church oversaw the governments of the land, so they were effectively in complete control. The actual start of the Papal States began in the mid-8th century, in 756 AD. By this time, the Eastern Roman Empire increased taxation, and were unable to protect Italy as it grew much weaker. The Pope at the time Gregory III took this as an opportunity to declare independence and break with the Empire. The Byzantine Emperor as well had also fallen out with the Pope on certain religious matters such as iconoclasm. Although the Lombards nearly conquered Rome, the Pope at the time Stefan turned to the King of the Franks who was Pippin the Short, and he promised to restore the captured lands to the Pope, ignoring the claims of the Byzantine Empire. Once the Franks defeated the Lombards, Pippin went through with his promise and gave back the land, and this whole event is known as the Donation of Pippin in 756 AD. This event provided the legal foundation for the Papal States, and it was further backed up by the Treaty of Pavia. In the initial stages of this EE4 nation, both the Papacy and the Holy Roman Empire had very good relations, and it climaxed in 800, when Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as Emperor of the Romans. As the centuries progressed, however, I'm sure some of you are aware that the relations between these two blocks of power did not go smoothly as a start. Leading up to the start date of EE4, the bishops within Rome were increasing their power, as Rome became an increasingly important centre of faith, and when Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne as Roman Emperor in 800, he established a precedent that, in Western Europe, no man would be Emperor without being crowned by the Pope. This brings us on to the Investiture Controversy, the most significant conflict between the Church and the medieval states within Europe, in which a series of popes challenged the authority of European monarchies. The Papal States grew in power significantly from the 11th century to the mid-13th century, and it began with Gregory VII's bold attack after 1075, in the traditional practices whereby the Emperor had controlled appointments to the higher church offices. The issue was, does the Pope of a monarch have the authority to appoint local church officials, such as bishops of cities and abbots of monasteries. Both these power blocks seemed to want to gain as much power as possible, and this would be a way to gain more. This event is unimaginable today, but the church was just so significant and was a major part of everyday life. The church served to give people spiritual guidance, and it served as their government as well. Perhaps it was the most important part of the population of medieval Europe's lives. Explaining, therefore, where the papacy was able to get power, and in some ways become the most influential state within the whole of Europe. At the end of the 11th century, in the name of God, the Pope called all of Christian Europe to go on a crusade. 
This is something that no other medieval monarch could do, and just gives you another example of papal power. The investiture controversy ended in 1122, when the emperor and papacy did a deal. The outcome seemed to mostly favour a victory for the Pope, and his claim that he was God's chief representative in the world. However, the emperor did retain considerable power over the church. Both this agreement, as well as the Crusades, gave the popes considerable prestige throughout Europe. During the 12th and 13th century, the Papal States was then perhaps the most powerful entity throughout Europe, although it's certainly true that throughout the rest of the Middle Ages, popes struggled with monarchs over power. Problems occurred for the papacy in the 14th century, as we get to the E4 start date, and the 14th century brought some serious challenges. During the Avignon Papacy, Papal claims to Italian territory were weakened by the fact that the popes no longer actually lived there. Things also grew even worse during the Great Schism between Catholicism and Orthodoxy. When we get to the start date of EU4 though, the Papal States were still incredibly powerful within Europe, and in EU4 they are the head of the Catholic Church. In my opinion, I think the Pope should actually be more influential within the game, and EE4 is lacking in the grand design of the Papal States and the Holy Roman Empire. The Pope should be very influential on HRE elections, emperors and internal turmoils, excommunication events, also divorces and emperor coronations might have quality flavour options. A possible EE4 event could be that you're giving a choice to enforce a rule of having to be blessed by the Pope to call yourself a Holy Roman Emperor, or take a massive prestige and instability hit. What do you guys think though? Should E4 implement any new flavour to the Papal State? Or does it not really matter anymore and wouldn't really impact the game at all? Despite the Papal State having lots of success early on in the Middle Ages, the Reformation signalled the beginning of the end for the Papal States. Many of the reformers over the centuries believed the Papal State shouldn't have that much power, and in response, many people tried to reform the Christian faith in order to take away power from the Pope. The Reformation under Martin Luther took hold as the centuries went by, and the Pope lost his power within the Holy Roman Empire. As secular powers grew stronger, they were also able to chip away at papal territory. The Papal States lasted until 1870, and although the Vatican is still relevant today, Catholicism does not have as much power as it did all those centuries ago. In EU4, the Papal States does actually have some fairly good national ideas, like plus 20% national tax modifier, and plus 5% discipline within the ambition. The Papal States also can form the Kingdom of God nation. With quite a lot of flavour around this nation, it's no wonder why people enjoy playing as a Pope. Was the Pope historically the most powerful state at the start of E4? Given the fact it could call upon the whole of Europe to go and crusade, as well as influence all the Catholic kings. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now. Shout out to our Patreons, J Erickson321, Shadowsinger, Jado52, Cargan, Flyerton, Henrique, Redguard76, Xiaomi, and Charlie Demorel. Your support means a lot, guys.